And now for something completely different. This is a watch from Looch, and I first became aware of it when I received some comments after I looked at the Vostok's classic Commandeerski. Now, like the Commandeerski, it's an inexpensive mechanical watch with some Soviet roots. And it's similarly priced, ranging from $40 to $60 depending on where you look. Now, while the Commandeerski is a tough little field watch, the Looch is definitely more urban, with sort of a classic vintage aesthetic. And the other major difference, if you haven't noticed, is it only has one hand. Now, the one-handed Looch is not the only one-handed watch around. There are a few others. But its unique combination of affordability, design, and mechanical movement make it a rather interesting watch on the market. So let's start things off by taking a look at the dimensions. And this is one area that the Looch really shines in, as it really is a very small, lightweight platform. Width-wise, it's just under 38 millimeters without the crown, and width is only 40. Lug to lug is a shorter 43 and a half, so this really should fit anyone. And it's very thin at just under eight millimeters and only weighs 40 grams, all while still using 20 millimeter straps, so plenty of options. Now, water resistance is a question here, and according to Amazon's page on it, it has it, but doesn't say what it is. So going to Luch's website and relying on Google Translate, you can see that it has a water resistance of not, whatever that means, which I'm interpreting as just having a minimal amount of water resistance. So as long as you don't go swimming or take a shower with it, I think you'll be okay. And speaking of their site, I'll link it down below. It does have some interesting history on the company as well as how watchmaking got started in Belarus in the 50s by Soviet decree. Not to mention you can see all the different color variations they have of this, and there are a lot of different colors. So the case is very rounded and very minimal. It's brass with a chrome coating, which partially explains why it's so lightweight. It also reminds me a lot of a Timex Weekender, but thinner and not quartz, obviously. The lugs are very short, and one thing I'll mention is that the clearance between the spring bars and the case is a little on the tighter side. Most natives should be fine, unless you have a really thick leather one, although that's partially due to having very fatter than normal spring bars. If you replace them with normal ones, you should be just fine. Also, those stock spring bars are actually too fat to fit in a couple metal bracelets I had, so you might want to swap them to normal ones anyways. If the case wasn't minimal enough, the snap-on case back takes it a step further, being completely bare of all markings. It actually feels maybe a little too naked here, although it does feel like it could be made of stainless steel. To the right we have the crown. It's not signed, and it is a little on the small side, but I never really had much trouble getting a hold and winding it. Back to the front we have a mineral crystal, which sticks up out of the case just slightly, maybe a quarter of a millimeter, which I always find a little annoying. But underneath that, we have the dial. As I said, there are a large variety of dials that you can get, but this one is a particularly nice metallic black dial with a very nice sunburst effect. The hour hand is a very long, simple metallic stick with a little bit of a pointed end, making the whole design more reminiscent of a speedometer or some type of pressure gauge. Although one major downside to this one-handed design is that filming it is not very visually interesting. Even time lapses aren't very exciting here. The dial is also minimal, with nothing applied on it, just silver paint. At the top, you have the brand name Luch, and at the bottom, in a smaller font, you have 15 joules and Belarus. You also have your standard hour indicators, followed by a rather detailed chapter ring, which is actually rather necessary here for the one-handed operation. Between each hour, there are indicators for every five minutes, with slightly larger indicators at the 15 minute intervals. So in essence, the Looch is accurate to within five minutes. Which depending on your lifestyle, and more importantly your personality, may or may not be enough. 
Now, I did read some kind of interesting statements talking about how having a one-handed watch can change your mindset when it comes to time. Some sort of pseudo-philosophical thing about stopping time from controlling you and helping you to control time, which I don't really buy into that. But I was more interested in how well I could adapt to using a one-handed watch. So I actually took it with me down to San Antonio when I went down for a four-day trip. I was actually surprised at how easy I could adapt to it, reading it just as quick and maybe quicker than a regular three-hander. Well, to within 10 minutes. The overall design of the dial I really like here. The sunburst effect is very nice and combined with that silver paint really give it a classic vintage feel. Movement-wise, it uses Lucha's own one-handed mechanical movement, so you will need to hand wind it. But I do believe that it's a standard beat and around 40 hour power reserve. But as for accuracy, well, without a second hand, all I can really say is that it's accurate enough, at least to five minutes. Although I do want to point out that the luch is a little loud here, at least for a mechanical, where I would actually notice it ticking while I was sitting on my desk. Now the strap is okay. It's leather and what you would expect at this price. Although I think it's actually slightly better than what comes with the Vostok Kamandirsky. The leather feels just a little nicer, especially on the inside of the loop. It feels more like a nicer suede. The loops seem a little small and flimsy, but overall I think it will last. Now on the wrist, it feels okay. I think the watch does look a little small, but not much. The case is minimal and it's really old dial when you look at it, so it's never hard to read. And I particularly loved how thin it is, especially as the days have been getting colder. Usually, you'd need a quartz watch for something this thin. Although I didn't particularly care for the leather band that much, perhaps I didn't give it enough time to break in. But put this thing on a NATO, and I really love how it wears. The luch is so thin that a NATO barely makes a difference, and it just really hugs your wrist until you need it. As light as it is, you could easily forget you're wearing it. Now, one thing I did learn about the Luch, and I can't stress this enough, is that this watch really is a chameleon. It really doesn't matter what strap you put it on, it really looks great in all of them. That vintage sunburst dial, it can easily go from casual to formal looking, which is really great when you consider how inexpensive this watch really is. Overall, I really like the Luch. It's a simple, effective, and efficient design. It is a unique look that could be a great conversation starter. And it's a cheap watch that more importantly, doesn't look cheap. In fact, on some straps, it actually looks quite good. Price-wise, it's an interesting alternative to a mechanical Commandeerski. And style-wise, an interesting alternative to a Timex Weekender. But I think it's best used for someone who's interested in a mechanical or interested in a one-hander, but isn't fully ready to commit. It's an inexpensive way to test the waters, so to speak. For me, while I like the Luch, I still think it's more of a, a novelty than a watch that would replace one in my collection. I like it. It's cool, it's unique, it's just I don't really see myself wearing one on a regular basis. I'd much rather prefer a normal three-hander. But it has got me thinking about what a 24-hour one-hand would be like. Now, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment telling me what you think about the luch, or if you've ever had a one-hander. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again.